Thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to show you how I prepare a venison steak. I cook the steak a lot for my family, my friends, a lot of guys. You know, a lot of them will tell me how good the steak is. Can't even tell the difference. You know, one of the most important things um, with venison, I feel, you, you might hear a lot of infer a lot of different information on this, but with the venison steak, um, the one thing the butcher had told me, you know, it's something that kind of stuck to my mind on how to get rid of that gamey taste, you know, um, or at least limit it. The one thing he said to me is treat it like a pack of chicken. What would you do if you bought chicken at the store? Um, you know, would you leave it sitting in the back of the truck while you talk to your buddies for, you know, three, four hours? He said the most important thing you can do when you harvest the venison, um, you're going to want to make sure you keep it at a certain temperature. Depending on the temperature outside, what I like to do is um, I'll instantly field dress the venison and then I will um, make sure I keep it at that temperature. If it's really warm outside, I'll drop you know some ice into the cavity to keep it at a certain temperature and I take it right up to my pro the place that processes my uh, venison for me. So that's going to be one of the key things. You want to keep it at a certain temperature that will eliminate a lot of the gamey taste. Some guys will say they'll remove a ton of the fat. I watched a lot of videos on it and um, I personally don't go crazy about removing all the fat. I found that the fat doesn't have an extremely strong gain taste if it's kept fresh because deer um, naturally is a very lean meat. So I'm going to show you right now exactly how I cook my steak. Okay, and I'm going to make another episode too. I got a really nice roast in here and that roast and these steaks I have here now, uh, this is actually from that video on um, the rock. This is from The Rock. I just got this back a couple days ago. If you want to see that hunt on The Rock, just check out my channel. You'll see it's episode number four. But what we're going to be cooking here today is the loin. The butter. This is the back strap that's been butterflied um, that they, they call the loin. Um, and then you have the tender loins that's sort of part of the back strap too. I have them. I don't think I'm going to cook them now. I'm going to just cook these two up right here. So basically what I have is I have the steaks here. I'm going to grab a plate. We have the steaks here, and I don't marinate my steaks. You know, my marinating is keeping it as fresh as I possibly can. That's going to be one of the most important things, I think, when cooking the venison. So these have already been butterflied. I've got a really nice um, place I take these steaks to to get, to get butterfly, get the uh, backstrap all nice, really nice cuts. It's an Amish farm I take it to. They don't just process venison, but they process all meats, pigs, cow, and um, it makes it really good taste. So what I need to do is get this burner. What I'll put, usually put the burner on, I'll put it on about an eight. You can put it on eight or even high. So what you're going to want to do is actually, I'm forgetting a step here. <clears throat> I want to make sure I show you exactly what I do, guys. So what I'm going to do is grab some butter. I use a little bit of butter. I think it gives it the best taste. Whatever butter you, whatever butter you prefer. All right. And what I use is a fork. Anytime I cook the steak, I just use a fork. I take a little bit of this butter. It's not just for the flavor, but this, by me putting the butter into the pan, it kind of shows me exactly how hot this pan is before I drop my steak in. I want to get it pretty hot. And then what I'm going to grab out of the cabinet is I use a salt and some pepper. That's all I'll use to uh, marinate my steak. Salt and pepper. The steak itself has its own taste um, if you're keeping the steak um, super fresh. It's going to be so, so important to keep that for, uh, steak. I can't emphasize that enough. I know I've said it several times. It's going to be the most important seasoning you can do to a steak is to, um, when you harvest a venison, to keep it fresh. Now that my pan's getting hot, I'm going to grab a couple of these steaks here. I'm going to drop them on there, just like that. I'm going to rinse my hands off real quick. Okay, and then what I automatically will start to do is I want to get some salt on top of this steak. So this salt, as it cooks, will just kind of soak into the steak, which is going to be important. I'll even put a little bit of pepper on here, a little bit of ground, fresh black pepper. Okay, so I'm going to let that brown up a little. But there's going to be a very important step here. 
when you're cooking the steak. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure you have a, a cup of water. You're, you're not going to use the whole thing. So you're going to just set the cup of water right there as you're uh, cooking. Okay? So you're going to grab your fork. Now the most important thing you can do with this steak is you have to keep an eye on the bottom of the pan as you're cooking. As, that, as you can see, the juices are flowing from the steak and the butter. It's starting to brown up on that bottom of that pan. You want to make sure that that does not burn. Okay, when it starts to look like it's starting to burn, you're going to put not too much water. You don't want to boil the steak. That's going to be so important. But you want to get the steak and you actually want to mop the bottom of the pan as you're cooking. Not letting it actually, all those juices burn. So uh, I put a little bit of water in there. Okay, now I'm mopping up the bottom of the pan, cleaning the pan off, almost like washing the pan with the steaks. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and put a little more pepper in there, I mean a little salt, fresh salt on top of those steaks. It's going to be important. You get a good amount of salt and pepper on those steaks because it's going to really soak that flavor into the steak. So, right now I have the burner on a high. And I'm just going around, just mopping that pan, keeping the pan nice and clean. You know, not letting it really burn on the bottom because you don't want to waste that flavor. Flipping the steak, rubbing the juices onto the steak. It's going to be so, so important. Okay, now you can see in this one area here, it's starting to burn a little. Okay, it's getting really, really dark brown. See that dark brown right there is some really good... Uh, marinade that you want onto that steak. You don't want it. You don't want it to burn. So you're going to put a little juices in there, a little bit of water, and now it's going to instantly lift that off the bottom of the pan. Now you can see it almost evaporates almost right away. But see how you're rubbing it onto the steak, getting it on that steak, keeping it nice and nice and fresh. You can see putting a nice coating on those steaks. Now, it doesn't take long to cook these. These are just about done. Okay, as you can see, nothing really burnt in the pan. That is going to be the key on having a good steak. You're going to want to have it on a high temperature, salt, pepper, and you want to keep moving the steak so the bottom of the pan does not burn because that's where a lot of that flavor is on the bottom of that pan. You can see how it's starting to burn a little bit there. You're going to put a little bit of water in there, and we're going to start cleaning that pan. See, that wasn't enough. We're going to put a little more in there. And we're going to quickly start mopping the pan, getting that off of the bottom of the pan. Okay, you can see how it's rubbing onto the actual steak, and that's what you want to do. You don't want to put too much water to where it boils the steak. It, 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 that's not going to really give it the flavor you're looking for. You want to just keep that pan clean at the same time, putting those juices onto the steak. Okay, you can see how that pan is, I mean this burner is on high. You can see how nothing burned on the bottom of that pan. You're just slowly taking those juices and getting them onto the steak. That's going to be so important. Okay, so these steaks are just about done. Now when you think you're at the point where you, you got the steak where you like it, you're going to just kind of let it thicken up a little bit on that pan and kind of really sear each side of the steak. What's going to be so important, once they get nice and seared like that, now normally what I'll do is I'll come over to here and I will grab, grab my cutting board, try not to drop too many pans, and I will put my cutting board right down there onto the counter. Alright, so now you're at, these steaks have been seared pretty well. You don't want to overcook them, depending on how you like them cooked. Alright, so that's going to be that there. So I'll drop these steaks on here for a second, as you can see. Now I'll come back over to there. I'll put a little water in here. I don't want the bottom of this pan to burn. Okay. Now I'm going to get a little bit more butter, and I'm going to put that into the pan. We're going to make a little bit of a dip here. You can dip, these, dip this onto the steak. A little bit of fresh salt, a little bit of pepper, okay, just like that. Now you're not going to make it, uh, it's not going to make a tremendous amount. Just that little bit is going to give it a good, good flavor. So you're going to thicken that up. 
just like that. And that's basically it. Now what I'll do is, I'll actually get the steaks, and I will just get the steaks and just re-rub them back in this to give this a really, really good coating on those steaks. Just like that. Okay? As you get that coating onto the steaks, all right, I'll leave the pan there, and then I'll grab the salt. I'll put a little extra salt around on the cutting board, something to maybe dip into. And then we're going to grab a good steak knife. All right, we're going to cut into these steaks, as you can see here. You got the steak, how it just cuts in. It's got a little red in there. Not overdone, it's got a little bit of red. I'll dip that in there, maybe put it in here. Give that a taste. Oh my gosh. That is just amazing. I mean, that is better than, I believe, than any steak I could ever cook. I mean, this is a venison that I'd harvest just a couple days ago. So, why do I hunt? Right here. I mean, it's one great example. This is, uh, you know, like I said, a venison I harvested just a couple days ago. Never frozen. And as you can see, this steak, you know, the way I cooked it, Fast, easy, didn't really need to marinate it, and it has zero game taste. So, mmm, just amazing. Oh, and before you leave, in my next episode, I'm going to show you how I cook a roast. So stay tuned for my next episode on how I cook my roast personally. Thanks a lot.